you you got to go with your plan and you got to be willing to go with no parachute if you're a rapper and you're willing to tattoo your face that means you willing to say that I'm so married to this thing I'm willing to to be about it so much that I'm going to take measures to maim myself, to disfigure myself, so that I don't even have an opportunity to have a plan B. If good people had the same amount of faith as bad people, you, you'd have tenfold, because when you got it, when you was a good individual with character, you'd be able to sustain, you'd be able to build. But the reality of the situation is, there's a lot of people that are willing to do a lot of stuff that you ain't willing to do. You know, people around me started getting anxious. Even though I graduated with a 3.8 GPA, graduated with honors, got awards for the most intern hours, got awards for outstanding um, broadcasting, got so many awards, they, I got a broadcasting award for the scholarship in, in, in as little as a month. The same people that told me, man, like, I'm so proud of you, man. Like, you grinding, you killing the game in less than a month. They had so little faith that I would get a job. They just said, yo, bro, you know, Walmart's hiring. And I said, We see your G push, we like this. If people who do bad can go out and do whatever they want. And I can't believe God that I can get a job. Why do we go to why do we go to church in vain then? And I just remember walking off. I knew that I learned a valuable lesson. Nobody's going to want it more than you do. Steven Njoku off the IR, activated, ready to go for the Cleveland Browns today, all pro or hell no. Man, I'm in a charitable mood. I'm going to say all pro. I know what Gary's going to say. Dingy, dingy. I know. Come on, say it, Gary. Dingy, dingy. Come on, say it for all these Yes. Guys. Go ahead and do it. Come on. Oh, man. Hell no. You're cold. Hell no. Your heart's as cold as sandwich meat. Hell, You're he, awful. He, it's the holiday season, Garrett. He, he, you listen, are terrible. His game is cold. He ain't played since it's been hot outside. You think he about to just come out here and get your money off? No. You're not about to come out here and get your money off, David and Joku. Is it Carlson Keith going to play? He went to Princeton. Yeah. He's he went to Dartmouth. Carlson will get more sense than Joku. Oh, get out of here. Who's that Darren Fells kid in Houston? Ain't nothing wrong with a nine to five. Ain't nothing wrong with that. It'll get job, you have a live nice life and you can do it. But for those that wanna say that I wanna put myself out here and I wanna do something special, it take an obsession. Um, I get to OU my freshman year and um, I come out balling. I had came from McKinley and I thought McKinley was so up top. Um, listen, I used to tell my dad, I said, man, Dad, can you believe it? We out here doing two-a-days, and they only got me playing one way. Not them fake two-a-days y'all be doing now. These is the real two-a-days. I'm talking about padded practice. You go lift weights. You go get you a little nap. Come back. Padded practice. You gonna run gassers after that practice. Then you got films. Then you gonna go back to the dorm rooms, and then you gonna chill out for five to 10 minutes, and they gonna wake you up and do it all over again. I got red shirted my first year, 
during that first year, I felt like I was good enough to play. I felt like I should have been playing. I was rotating in with the twos. So I was, had a, was on the travel team, I was ready to go. And a week before they was getting ready to go to Iowa State, which was our first game, coach comes to me and says, yo, we're gonna red shirt you, man. And, you know, we, we wanna red shirt you. I wasn't trying to hear it, bro. In hindsight, like, you know, you know, he was just trying to let me know, like, you know, why would you burn a whole year of eligibility to play a couple snaps here or there? And I said, cool. So anyway, that first year, you know, on scout team, I just went back to the OG Bush team. So I, I took that as an advantage of me, you know, out here on scout team. And them is my play days. Them is my days. I get better. Them is game days for me. Tuesdays and Thursdays, y'all going to get hell. Tuesdays and Thursdays, you not getting no breaks. I was jumping around. I had no assignments, organized celebrations on them dudes. I was taking the pitch guy and the quarterback and be like, nope, I got the quarterback. No, I got pitched now. Like it, it, like, it was just bad, man. And I was just like, y'all red-shirted me. Y'all not going to get no plays off all year. Came back the next year at the Akron Rubber Bowl against Perry. It's the last game of my high school career. First game of my college career starting was at Akron. I came out, you know what I got to do that first game. Talk about Nick Sparks, he's not getting to play. At the 36 yard line, open the way for Payne to run through there and pick up a first down. Take to Payne, Fry, Hendry, the soft. He's got it at the Ohio 47. Caught by Zerker. Established sacks, two sacks, multiple tackles for loss. We out there doing our thing. They like, man, this dude, he gonna be the truth. Play that whole year, man. I had great games against Toledo. I had a really good game against Miami of Ohio. I had two sacks against Ben Roethlisberger. I played good against West Virginia, at West Virginia. So, I mean, I did, I did my thing, man. And so for me, I'm thinking, all right, my goal is to get better, keep working, do my thing, get my money off, and get better physically. There was already scouts and different people coming to the practices, and I'm like, man, I'm already playing as a, a redshirt freshman. Give me three more years. I'm still right on my own track to where I want to be. Take two. Take two and two, one. This is as close as we can get to the base of the World Trade Center. You can see the firemen assembled here, the police officers, FBI agents, and you can see the two towers. A huge explosion now, raining debris on all of us. We better get out of the way! I always tell people 9-11 changed my life forever. I was actually getting ready to go to English class and um, we was in um, Boyd Hall and I, I actually saw the, the Twin Towers go down and people said, hey, don't go to class, go to the football stadium. So we went to the football stadium and, and we, we heard about what was happening and we just realized that, you know, we realized what was going, what was going down and, and that week we were scheduled to play um, North Carolina State at NC State. Um, that game um, subsequently got pushed back to the last game of the year. My mom always has premonitions about stuff. So for that whole week, she was just sitting there telling me like, don't play in this game. And my dad was laughing like, what the heck are you talking about, Dorothy? This kid is like, he play, he on scholarship, he gonna play a game if they tell him to play a game. So I looked at that game as an opportunity for me to shine in that game. And my mom just kept telling me, don't play, just tell them something's wrong with you and just don't go. We get to the game. First part of the game, I'm out here getting pressure on Phillip Rivers. Um, I had a tackle for loss early in the game. They had to start sliding their protection my way. I was like, man, this is awesome. Listen, this is what, I, this is what I'm looking for. There's a rollout play. And um, Phillip Rivers, um, if anybody knows, Phillip Rivers is not the, the spryest of cats. He's not a fast dude or anything. He rolls out to my side and um, I cut him off. Like, you know, and he sees that I, I'm, he can't outflank me. I'm focused on him so much and I'm mirroring him that I didn't see in my peripheral um, the running back, you know, T.A. McClendon was sitting right here. 
he cut me low. And when he hit me, my whole right knee just collapsed. I knew on that field at that moment in time, like my life had changed forever, specifically as being an athlete. I come back in record time. I come back in eight months. By June, I'm already working out with the team. July comes around, I'm already doing my thing. I'm already back rotating in the rotation. I'm back playing. Two days come back. I'm not missing a step. I'm back in two days practicing. One week before the game in a scrimmage and a running back is just running. They throw him a toss. Once again, I'm like, y'all gotta understand. Y'all just not gonna outrun me to this edge, bro. Come on, dog. it's all about these pursuit angles, man. I cut him off. He plants, I plant. This time I plant with my left knee. My whole leg gives out. Whole left knee gives out. And I was just like crying like a, like a kid. Like they stopped practicing everything because like I knew that I just tore my ACL in my left knee. And it wasn't so much that it hurt because I could deal with the pain. It was just knowing that I had rehabbed eight months of my life just to get the right one back, just to go through it, just to even trust it. And then I go back and then I do that to my left knee. This is uh, for a nerve pill. This is my Tylenol Freeze. Uh, this is Ambien. I take this to go to sleep at night. This is for a water pill. It's called hydrochlorothiazide. I hate taking this because it makes you sensitive to the light. And then this one is something that I'm going to take now. And it's really, 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 I got to take this. This is for my neck. It's called Topiramid. It's, it's used for a nerve drug. Um, I usually take these um, twice a day and it helps me specifically with my neck. You looking at me just like you got a problem. I don't think you want that because I'm a solver. I'm ready for you. Are you ready for me? This for me is uh, a near and dear place to me. This is actually where um, I started doing uh, the Cleveland Browns game day operation stuff. So if you look, it still has Browns weekend board op operations. And I typed that up like eight years ago. This setup is going to control every single control center for like every single affiliate for the Browns. And I just remember coming here and having to have pinpoint focus from like five in the morning into whatever the Browns was done. I thought it was the coolest thing in the world when um, Jim Donovan used to be like, and our producer back in the booth, Garrett Bush. And I would be like, yeah, talk to him. Talk to them! Let them know! The fact that like, like I come in here now and be like, I know what that is, I know what that is, I know what this is, I know what this is. And for a person that like never really ever wanted to be on the technical side, I think this is one of the, um, I say one of the best accomplishments I've ever had. 216-578-0092 at gbush91 on Twitter. We got four chairs open, but you already know how we give it up here on the barbershop. I'm gonna talk to him about this Andre Drummond trade. I'm gonna tell you what, I need y'all to step your game up. I need y'all to stop poo-pooing this deal. Stop throwing cold water on the deal right now. The Cavs is trying to do something. They trying to do something. And how I used to start was, I wanted to be like mysterious. My intro is just barbershop clippers. And I would never tell nobody when I was on, it would be like a surprise. At the time, we didn't even play hip hop. 
it was like no hip hop bumper music. That, like I would come on and play different music bands, hip hop bands. And then I started, you know, going to get my own um, licensed music. Like I would get it from like artists and they would just send me beats and send me like instrumentals. And people would be like, who the heck is this barber cat dude? Uh, at GBush91 on Twitter, at GBush91 on Twitter. If you're not following me, stop playing yourself. Um, let's get to the phones. First up today on the barber shop, we got Dale in Chagrin Falls. What's going on, Dale? I remember the first two years I ever had a consistent show. I didn't write nothing. Like, I used to go in that joint like Little Wayne or something, like two, three hours. Nothing, n not writing nothing. Other hosts would be like, yo, where are your notes at, dog? And I'm like, notes? I've been I've been rehearsing this my whole life. These is these is my these is my scriptures. I live by this stuff. Players like, no, no, no. You have to have notes, dog. <laughs> like, get some notes. I get an opportunity to work with some of the people I grew up watching, Jeff Phelps, Andy Baskin. You know, I get a, I get to hang out with um, one of the best to ever do it, BSK. Um, Kendall Lewis, he was like a forefather pioneer of this game. You know, when I started off by just, you know, I was answering phones, bro, like running the board. It gave me an opportunity to, to like hone my skills and to like make mistakes. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, he didn't call me in office a lot of times and be like, I'm gonna need you to tell me one reason why we shouldn't fire you today. <laughs> like, he understood kind of even before what, what I did. He was just like, yo, you got a movement. Like, people really, like, people really mess with you. Now, I ain't really made it, but one day when I make it, I'm going to be in here. Like, for real, for real, like, y'all should just put me in. They got Dustin Fox here, man. Shout out to Dustin, man. Glen Oak, Stark County, you know what I'm saying, Ohio State Buckeyes. My man Ken Carmen right here, shout out. Listen, he went to Perry High School. Perry High School, Ken Carmen is alum. That's two Stark County boys. It's crazy, right? Two Stark County boys in Cleveland, and then that's Adam the Bull. He don't count, he from New York. Y'all need to go ahead and put me in here, bro. Stop playing around. Like, my face can go right there by Dustin's. Um, I, you know what I'm saying? Cut my cheeks down, though. I want my good side. And when you give me my bobblehead, my, my little flat bill, I want my cheeks to be just like this, flat. Put me in here, y'all can put me in there. You can put a weekend dude in here, stop playing. You don't even want your boy in here, man. Education is great, but education is only as good as what you're allowed to do with that education. I actually had to sit out a quarter um, in college because I had back surgery, which caused me to have to sit out that quarter and I actually had to, um, you know, I didn't get a, a chance to graduate with my class. So what I did is I did stay in double major and I majored in marketing uh, and communications. I even had an internship. Um, I was able to do an internship after football was over, so that was good. So, you know, I'm figuring like I'm really well equipped. You know, I get out of college and, and I go to uh, Charlotte, North Carolina and um, I begin, I take my Series 7 and 66 and start working for this company as a financial advisor. Uh, and then the great stock market crash of 2007, do not collect $200, do not pass go. And here I was laying on my mom's couch, unemployed. I didn't have any felonies. I, d I didn't have any uh, tattoos at the time. I didn't have any children. Um, I still don't have any children. I, I didn't have any crazy debt. Um, I had degrees, I had an internship. I had all of these things working for me. I would put in job applications and people would tell me I'm overqualified. I would go into interviews and they say, well, you know, you, you really did a really good job on your assessment. It was really good. And, uh, and you know, you're great with math skills, but you you know, your interview kind of sounds too good. You know, see, it's, it's, tell me your answers seem a little rehearsed. I'm like, I mean, is this what America is? You know, I, I'm on the couch um, and, and, and I feel like at that point in time, I was, I was fed a bill of goods. You're told to go to college, get an education, get a degree, 
do all of these great things. And I step by step went through that entire process. And I'm still unemployed. Then what does that say for the kid that ain't at 100 percent for the kid that don't have the money, don't have the support, don't have the infrastructure? What kind of example is that? And I was just demoralized for, for everyone, um, not just myself. But, there, but there's, there's one thing that you can never take um, an account for, um, and that's God. So yeah. So what's up? How y'all doing? I'm doing good. Y'all good? Y'all good? Yeah, y'all good. Y'all yeah. good? Yeah, I'm doing good. Y'all good? 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 Y'all and to use it when you get out. I started off wanting to play football. I played football in high school. I won a state championship. Um, I played basketball. Um, I played baseball in high school. And I played football in college. And I knew for in my heart that I was going to play in the NFL. And I got hurt. Can somebody tell me how many surgeries you think I had? Two? Ten. Six. Five. Thirty-six. Six. Four, six three, seven. Three, eight. Nine. Eight, ten. Eleven. Twelve. Six. Fourteen. Eight. Eight. She got it. She, you, you, you kind of cheated a little bit, but she got it. 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 I had 13 surgeries. And you know what those surgeries taught me? To stop. <laughs> yeah. That was one of them. I don't currently play football, so I did stop. But those surgeries taught me that you're going to have bad things that happen in your life. But it's not about whether those bad things continue to happen to you. It's about what you do when they happen. God is the ultimate equalizer. It don't matter who don't like you. As long as you got God, you all right. He told me, listen, I was the one who put you in the field and got you that scholarship. I was the one who brought you through all these, these knee injuries and back injuries and all that good stuff. You'll be all right. And one day I was on the couch and I was looking at TV and I was watching my favorite sports talk host, by the way, shout out to Bruce Drennan. I used to watch All Best Off every single day. I was watching him and a guy called on TV and said, yo, Bruce, Bruce, how can I get on? I want to be on the radio just like you. How can I get put onto the game? He told my man, Gene. He said, Gene, hook him up with the Ohio Center for Broadcasting. Man, it was almost like, like God was telling me, like he, he actually told me, you might want to get up and call them folks. I said, but God, I ain't got no money. He said, you might want to get up and call them folks. And I said, all right. Called them, started school 7-26-2010, and the rest is history. Barbershop is here. Barbershop clothing is here. G. Bush is in the building. You gotta go grind and go get it. You gotta go grind and go get it. May never be second, it's precious. When everyone's talking to Lily, I'm driving in different directions. Still be in the front of the like, hey man, I like the show, man, but you gotta do a show in the barbershop, bro. You can't be doing it in your house. It's really good. Like, oh, we gonna get that done, man. We appreciate that, man. Let's do it, man. Sure. You know, you know what I'm saying? When you see me, I'm genuine. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's people, you know, the great love I get is the diversity in the barbershop, man. I got people from the east side, but I live in the west side. But when I go to the east side, I get so much love in the east side. All the heights, Maple, Shaker, Cleveland Heights, it's about 35,000 Heights in Cleveland. And I just think it's just because I just, I, I'm just gonna keep it real with it. I'm, not, I'm just a dude, like when you come in the barbershop, cats is comfortable, you know what I'm saying? We talk about anything. I feel like I was the only, the only one person in the city that was able to touch down on certain issues. Like I can call in and, and we could talk about Colin Kaepernick tomorrow. Livecast ain't gonna do that with you. I'm just trying to, we just trying to 
get it. We just trying to, we just trying to work, man. I said, you know how it be when, when, when you trying to do something for yourself, and it's how, Lord worked that way, man. It, it worked that way, man, because you do, do, you do all you can do, and then you gotta stand on faith. As far as content creators, sports is is great because it gives you something relevant and it's easy and you can cut it up and it's boom, boom, boom. But I quickly realized that we was missing something and where you can really make a, a mark in the industry was really in entertainment and music. Nothing gets more contentious than when you gotta debate five things. If I tell you right now, give me your five favorite candy bars and I tell you three of them is gonna be a Snickers, a Twix, and a Baby Ruth. Three, four, five people gonna be pissed off because they're like, uh-uh. Snickers is overrated. You forget, you forgot Almond Joy, you forgot Milky Ways. Five is the perfect number. And what better way to debate five when you got three people who debate for a living? I'm 38 years old and I witness my brothers still tussle, argue, wrestle, fight with passion. And they do it for free. How many hipsters you drunk for the outfit? <laughs> <laughs> I was listening. It looked like you just slew the whole barbershop panda. I'm just <laughs> I love panda. What's going on, man? Everything you see that we do, we run by ourselves, we shoot, we light, we invest in ourselves. So for me, it's always about taking a risk and taking them chances. This might work. It may not, right? We can, we can put a lot of time, energy, and effort into it right. and take L's. We can put our money, we got cameras, we got invested time, we, get, we got invested with, with just energy and effort and finding business and finding venues and gas money and we renting studio space. Like, we can do all that. And it could be, we can get six likes on Instagram and four and a half followers on Facebook. Look, if you ain't trying to get money yourself, in some way, shape, or form. If you don't get me money, I get you on nobody. You're not gonna get none. I think that, you know, what's harder than not succeeding is regret. You know what I'm saying? Because the feeling of regret means you didn't even attempt to, to do anything. You know, how many times, you know, have we talked about since we've been alive as brothers talking about doing stuff together as far as our creativity, putting projects together? You need to go celebrate this momentous right. occasion. We got an opportunity to, to have them debate it out, whoever makes the best argument. And plus, you as a fan get a voting voice in this thing. And it's from all genres, pop. Uh, um, you know, we may even do country topics. We're, we're all over the place with it. We just gonna have fun with it, man. We gonna argue, we gonna fight, we gonna be passionate. And we want y'all to argue, fight, and be passionate in these comment sections and stick up for your top five, man. When somebody tunes into the top five, yeah. what can they expect from me? <laughs> they, <laughs> for sure, they're gonna definitely expect some new clothes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna always have my clothes when I'm trying to get the clothing line off the ground. Right, you know right. what I'm saying? So I'm no always, that plug. you know what I'm saying? Check him out, man. Yeah, for sure. Man. You know what I'm saying? Debating with Trent, debating with Bryce, and debating with you and stuff like that. These ain't people who don't know what they're talking about. Everybody know what they're talking about. You know what I'm saying? I feel this is just something that people need to see. Like, yo. It's a lot of positive black dudes in here that's actually sitting down, making something happen together. I'm gonna tell you what, he got me hyped, man. That's all love, bro. <laughs> he got me hyped, man. I'm ready to go in the studio, man. And, and that's what we just looking to do to build and, and, and build some positive energy out here. That's what we on. It's like rap lyrics. Sometimes it go over heads. You listen to a song again, three years later, it hits you like, oh, that's cold. I just now, oh. Now you done lived, you got experience. You done, you done traveled the world. You done had some losses. You done won some. Now you got perspective. Now you can understand that bar because you done lived it. You know, I'm 10 years into my dream, 10, 12 years into my dream. That's three girlfriends and an ex-wife ago. That's it's crazy. So back then, 
I couldn't understand. I couldn't fathom where I'm at right now. I believe in what my dream and my talent is. Well, the reality of the situation is, it's all about what you're willing to do. 